Let me just start by telling you about this. Can you all see that? Okay, this is my best art investment. It cost me 4 95 at the Tate Gallery. And the reason I wear it is because I know if I want to talk to you or not. And it's happened to me today, here, and yesterday. I've had people come up to me and say, ooh, Estelle, what's with the skull? And then I've had other people say, were you a goth? Or I've heard people say, ah, Damien Hurst. So I know if you know your art, or if you think I was a goth, I was never a goth. So that explains my best, it's my friendship badge, okay? Anyway, so why is art so important? I believe that I have the best job in the world. I'm an art critic, I trained as a painter and read art history, and now I never get my hands dirty or covered in paint. Instead, I just criticize other people's heartfelt efforts. <laughs> and I don't mean to be mean, but sometimes I remember saying to one artist, listen, your artwork is like wallpaper and it's disappearing. And your artwork, I know it's very personal to you, it's like your children, but in this instance, your artwork, like your children, they're particularly ugly. <laughs> so sometimes I do upset people, but then they come and they say to me, thank you for being so critical and so honest. I've done my best work since then. And then I also talk to people who say, I don't know what I like. And the old joke is, of course, I don't know what I like, but I like looking at naked women. But they say, I don't know what I like, and this and that, and it doesn't go with my furniture or my sofa or my curtains. And you know, I knew an artist that actually got around that problem because he took some of the fabric from their curtains and he covered their frame in it. And then when they said, the artwork doesn't go with my curtains, actually it does. So let's have a look at how art is, make it part of your five a day. You wake up in the morning, you have your porridge, the healthy ones, or you have your cold pizza from last night, the unhealthy ones. But always look at a work of art. It will improve your soul for the day. It will make you happy. It's vitamin D for your eyes. It's vitamin C for your soul. It's carbohydrate for your eyes. It's like sitting on your favorite comfy sofa, wearing your old torn cardigan. Meeting your favorite aunt again. That's your favorite not aunt, not the one that annoys you. Okay, so this one, Picasso, still life with mandolin. Hands up, can you see still life with mandolin? Yes, okay. Also, who can see a man, there's his head, sat wearing his red and green Christmas jumper that his auntie gave him, sat on a leather and uh, steel Bauhaus chair eating fish and chips? <laughs> That's good. That works. There's no right or wrong answer in art. It's not a test. It's not an exam. Degard, dancer posing for a photograph. Okay, this is another interactive thing. Now, believe me, don't be embarrassed. Your neighbor is not looking at you. They are looking at their phone. They, I can't see you, the lights are very bright. Okay, what I want you to do is I want you to close one eye, not two, otherwise you won't see anything. Close one eye, hand out, and I want you to cover, put your hand that you've got outstretched in front of you over that leg. Okay, and I want you to look at that ballerina in the rehearsal studio. Now what I want you to do, still with your eyes shut, is I want you to move your hand and cover this leg. Now she's danced towards you, hasn't she? You know, she was here, and now she's danced towards you. And isn't that fantastic that Degas managed to achieve that on a canvas where he's caught a split second in time? But actually, he didn't make her move. You made her move. Now, some people who don't know quite how to look at art will say, oh, look at Degas. If I lifted up her tutu, that leg is not even attached to her hip. Na, 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 na. What an awful artist. But what a brilliant artist to get her to move towards you. Damien Hirst, the physical impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. I'm saying it fast because the name disappears in three seconds. That's a very, very long title. And it's a very long title because Damien Hirst is today's Turner. The genius, the great British artist Turner, who's going to be on the new £20 banknote, right? 
Damien Hurst is today's turn now. Whenever I say that, that also annoys people. As I say, I sort of annoy people when I talk about art. So today, da Damien Hurst is today's turner because this is not just a big old fish in a tank. This, let me read this one. Turn a uh, snowstorm steamboat off a harbour's mouth, making signals in... Oh, I missed it. Very long title. <laughs> what did I tell you? He's today's Turner. Very, very long title. But more than that, what Turner was doing... So Turner, allegedly, was strapped to the front of a ship, going out in crazy weather. This painting is almost has a washing machine effect, and it's throwing you from side to side. You're getting soaked, you're getting drenched. He, for his art, suffered so that you could appreciate that he was tied, and in his hand he had his little sketchbook and his water pad, uh, and he was painting these images on site. And he wants us to feel that energy and that sublime turbulence and Hurst, with his shark, is doing the same thing. If you look at it this way. Now, next time you see the shark, walk round it. Because what happens is the glass, depending on which panel you look at, is acting like a magnifying glass. And all of a sudden, that shark, which was far away, is right up. He's chasing you. He's going to bite your backside if you don't swim away. And then, as you walk round, you think, oh, thank God, I've outswam the shark. In your head, of course. I've outswam the shark. And then you walk round again, and you think, oh, my God, there's not one, there's not two, there's three sharks out of me. So it's like the same effect that Turner is trying to get, but using a shark, putting you in danger. So Hurst is today's Turner. David Hockney, we can use photographs to make works of art. We can use our phone to take self-portraits. We can make collages. We can draw on our iPad. So this one, if you look at this one, what he's trying to do is he's trying to give you a sense of movement. And the way to look at it is not to... Well, you can count all the um, uh, individual images if you want, but just imagine, think about when you're driving in a car, okay? When you're driving in a car, as the driver, you're taking notice of all these signs, the speed you have to go at, where you have to turn, when you have to stop. There's so much information we have to digest visually, but when you are the passenger, You've got your feet up, hanging out the window. You can see cans of oil chucked away, cigarette packets, bottle of beers. You can count the trees. Can you see there's a different speed to that side to that side? Again, you could do the Degar thing where you held up your hand. If you blocked off one side, it would appear slower, and the other side would appear much faster. So again, it's interaction. Mark Rothko. Untitled. I love it when an artist puts the word untitled because it means nothing and it means everything. The choice is up to you. People say, ah, that Rothko, he was influenced by when he flew in a plane and he was looking down over America at night and he could see the landscape. Other people say, no, you're wrong. He's influenced by his heritage, by the fact that he was um, brought up as a Jew. Um, this is mass graves in the concentration camp. Other people will say, no, that's ridiculous. What it's about is just that he loves colour. And you know, Rothko never said, this is right or that is right. Because as I said before, art is not an exam. There are no right answers. But for every great artist to change the course of art history, they have to realize and embrace what's going on in the world around them. So if I can turn around to you and say that this image is influenced by what was going on in 1969, you will believe me, because I'm an art critic, trust me. <laughs> OK, um, Millet. This painting called Isabella, here is Isabella. She is the daughter of a very rich Florentine family of merchants. Here are her two brothers. Um, here is her lover, Lorenzo. They are deeply in love. These two brothers are deeply jealous. This one, look at his legs 
outstretched, about to kick her faithful dog. He is so full of angst. He is so full of sexual frustration. He is busting his, oh, I can't say it, but look, he's cracking his nuts. Can you see that? <laughs> and to prove it, look, we have a reference here in the form of a shadow, how angry he is. <laughs> Here's the other brother looking at the wine, the blood color wine in the glass, and here's the bird of prey. What happens is these two, they murder Paul Lorenzo, and Isabella finds him dead, and she cuts off his head, and she buries him in this pot of basil, and every morning, dutifully, she waters his head underneath the herbs with her tears. And over here, just to let you know, um, there's another clue as to what period this was. There's the initials PRB. That's from the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood. Rembrandt, a great artist, the virgin and child in the clouds. There's the virgin and child. And they're in the clouds. And let's see what happens when we turn upside down. Oh my goodness, there's another head up there. We can't unfortunately turn great works of art upside down in galleries. If you are in a gallery and you want to appreciate a Jackson Pollock, don't turn it upside down. Instead, lie flat on the floor with your feet against the wall and look at it that way. That is the best way to appreciate a Jackson Pollock. Just don't say I told you to do it when you get arrested. <laughs> okay, this one, um, Peter de Hoog, a woman drinking with two men, a beautiful, beautiful painting, exquisitely painted majestically crafted. Don't forget, this is a woman drinking with two men. Hands up, who can see right through the woman's legs? Can see through her dress, see through her legs, see through the floor, hands up. You have been drinking too. <laughs> ah. Tracy M in my bed. This is where I also annoy people because I say that Tracy M in is today's Rembrandt. And please do not look at this as an empty bed. Look, your bedroom is a messy empty bed. So is mine. As Soon as the doorbell goes, you do the same as I do, right? You go run upstairs and shut your bedroom door because you don't want people to see your mess, right? But this is not an empty, messy bed. Why? Because it's done by an artist. And two, it's in an art gallery. Get with it. That pile of bricks, it's not a pile of bricks. So, here, the bed, okay, the unmade bed. Um, th there are cigarette packets, there's a pair of old slippers. That's the comfy slippers that visually I was telling you about when I was describing the sofa and your comfy cardigan and your friendly aunt. Um, so there's uh, bottles of vodka, there's dirty underwear, there's filthy sh bed sheets. This is Rembrandt today. If Rembrandt was alive today, he would not change the course of art history with his self-portraits. He would be painting very rich CEOs and their wives for the boardroom. Tracy Emin, this is not an unmade bed. This is a self-portrait. Because this is about Tracy Emin and her feelings. She was in this bed for a few days, having suffered a, a, a broken relationship. She was heartbroken. She didn't want to get out of bed. She felt dreadful. She felt emotionally drained. She felt confused. She, she felt haggard. She didn't want to get out of bed or do anything. So this is a very, very honest self-portrait. Please say to me, if you take one thing away, please tell your friends that Tracy Emin is today's Rembrandt with a self-portrait that is this bed, not a pile of brown paint on a canvas like Rembrandt would majestically do. So what is art? Well, Groucho Marx, another great art critic, said that art is short for Arthur. Now, what I want you to do, because you are all capable of being art critics, believe me, if I did it, anybody can do it. We all have to learn how to look of art. Art is a language. Mandarin is the most popular language in the world today. If you speak to me till you're blue in the face, till I'm blue in the face, face, till I pass out, I will not understand a word you're saying. But if I have lessons, I may be able to. So, just try this little experiment. Again, nobody's looking at you, I can't see you. Can you all just get into the pose of Rodan's the thinker? Okay, Rodan's the thinker. Come on, I know you're thinking, oh, 
I can be seen. Nobody's watching, okay? Right, ready? Who got it right? Who got it on the opposite leg? Hands up. Anybody? Two people? What, out of 750 people? You deserve a prize. TEDx, give those two people a drink on the house. <laughs> right, so everybody is capable of enjoying art if you jump in, dive in. Okay? Sleep with an art history book under your pillow. Read it last thing at night and first thing in the morning. It will aggravate your partner, but it will make you... you it will improve your life through art. Three simple words, A-R-T, but it's there. Thank you very much. <laughs>